mega spoiler alert at the end of this episode we're going to reveal that this podcast is actually called captain america and the infinity rewatch uh but in the meantime what's up i'm andrew fantasia how's it going everybody Oh, what's up, everybody? My name is Ryan J. Whitehead, and man, do we got a special guest lined up for you. Hi. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm just a, uh, I'm, I'm just a big, uh, I'm just a big fan and a really big nerd. So I'm, I'm just happy and honored that I was invited by Fantasia and Ryan. So, uh, you know, considering that it's a uh, mid pandemics, I get to talk to people about things that I like. So I'm really excited. And to clarify, when you say you're just a big fan, you mean you're just a big fan of Marvel, not of our show. We actually forced you to be here to boost our numbers. But it's cool. We get it. Yeah, no, totally. Now, this discussion is going to get crazy because it's the finale and it might get a little blue. So uh, if you don't like uh, them curse words uh, and you're not used to hearing Ryan and I get a little salty, well, let me just say listener discretion is advised. And leave it at that. Yeah, but you guys can handle it. You're big boys. The Falcon, I think, says the word bullshit in this episode. So oh, you've heard most no. of it already, right? You've heard it. You've heard Ooh. the BS word. You've heard the F word. Wow. You might have even heard the P word. I don't know. I'm not judging what words you say. Um, for our, our five listeners who are nuns, though, I sincerely I know. I think they're used to Steve Rogers. Rogers. He doesn't have um, that kind of language. No. Oh, and there you go. That right there, guys. Right there. That's <laughs> Anna just flexing that Marvel card. She's just like, "Yeah, here's my card. I I am a Marvel fan." Boom. There you go. Right there. There you have it. So, love it. I love where the head's at. Right. Yeah, you're you're already in the right head space. So, Anna, since this is your first time with us, uh, before we get into the episode, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about like your marvel cinematic universe experience like how did you get into it how, when did you start loving it um, you know I what's your take on it in a general? really big i mean mm -hmm. marvel and dc fan like comic fan since i was a little girl like my father uh read a lot of comics so i started reading my dad's old comics so i i think i've been into it like i uh, i think like probably like yourself and everybody else that listen to the podcast li watching the cartoons like x-men and uh Batman and anything like anything that you could get. I mean, I generally I'm a, I'm a huge nerd already into obviously Lord of the Rings and Star Wars could not get enough could read it over and over till the day I die. Um, so it's just been, I think, part of my life for a long time. So it's nice that we're coming to an age where we're, you know, I love the fact that we get really wonderful movies, but series are just so much fun. I think it allows a lot more creativity. It allows more for storytelling. And I think we're in an age now, I honestly feel like the golden age of uh, kind of like comic universe or comic movies, because there's just so much more content than ever before. Yes. It doesn't have to be um, limited to a two hour film. It can now, it can kind of, um, it can cater to both uh, viewers, someone that's brand new, someone that's coming into kind of like the marble fold. Uh, and then viewers like us that kind of are really into it, have been into it for a very long time and it's still very much appealing. So to me, this is, this is uh, Disney plus has, uh, has really nailed it here <laughs> with the series. Yeah. Do you have, um, is there like a, a comic book character from Marvel or DC or wherever who you think has not that you want to see done in a movie that hasn't been done or maybe just hasn't been done the way you think they deserve to be done? That's a hard Ooh. one. <sighs> you know, I'm a huge Gwen Stacy fan. <laughs> like, massive. And I understand that, mm -hmm. like, in every parallel mm -hmm. universe, Gwen Stacy always dies. He can never save her. Unless they're not together. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see... Like, we got to see a little bit of it in uh, Enter the Spider-Verse. But I would love to see... Mm -hmm. I would yeah. love to see Gwen Stacy, but honestly, Spider-Man's my biggest, like, I, that's what I started with. He's, he's the one that I really like. So I really love, uh, their, the new, um, like kind of the re new reimagining of Spider-Man. No more origin story. I think Ryan knows that I, I think we're all over it. We don't need to do it. So I really love what they're doing right now. 
I mean, like, if Uncle Ben gets shot it's one true. more time, I'm not going to feel it. I'm not going to, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter who you, ca- if you cast Gary Oldman and give me an award-winning Uncle Ben performance, I will not shed a tear for Uncle Ben <laughs> the, getting shot. Just the because best I casting I've ever so ever done was having Marissa Tomei as, um, as Aunt May. Like, incredible. Incredible casting. Like, listen, yes. Aunt May yeah. doesn't always have to be mm-hmm. a homely-looking older lady. No, no. But here's the thing. It's all about the modern twist, right? Because like all the the new family dynamics that we see in today's modern world, that's why I love what they did with Aunt May because yeah, you're, you know, you're going to have an aunt that's like pretty attractive. It's, it's, it is possible and she can be young and youthful. Why not? Right? Like, like that's why I love what Kevin Feige's done. He's like, yo, I got a hot aunt. This is a good reason to put in a hot aunt right there. Especially because I'm telling you, that's what he did. This is him just being like, it's cool, right? He's supposed to be in high school. Why is Aunt May some elderly woman? Aunt May can be someone that's like in her fifties and looks really good. Yeah, it's not nineteen sixty-two anymore. They don't need to all look like old folks. Yeah, no, but here's the thing, like, and, and, you know, in New York, like, come on, and Peter being that young, there's no way an older yeah. Aunt May would have a place in New York that, 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 that I know, nice, that brownstone you know? was looking come tight, on. looking tight. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, the townhouse that they used to live in, in New York in the comics was, was, oh, absolutely. that's like millions of dollars now, guaranteed. You there's better no be way. asking that May, like, you're done, yeah, you're done no mortgage, right? And you're going to give this to me, right? Because I will never be able to afford this. <laughs> Not on my Spider Man salary. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. sad. That's so sad. That's the Absolutely. real super villain here, folks, the housing market. <laughs> if if I was John Watts, because uh, I agree, I think that they what they did with the new origin and everything is fine. Uh, if I was John Watts, I would just I would have a scene where Peter's trying to cook rice when somebody breaks into his apartment and shoots at him, and he's holding a bag of Uncle Ben rice, and the bullet goes through it, and he's like, "Oh no, my rice!" And then oh, the scene just carries on from there. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Uncle oh, Ben yeah, gets I shot. Uncle, Everybody's I know, happy. I think actually, everybody gets their of everything order. obviously that's happening. I think they're not even called Uncle Bens anymore. I think they're rebranded. You're right. They. You're right. They changed the names. No, they, it's no, not no even more, called that anymore. So literally, no more Never Uncle mind. Ben. Uncle Ben's done. Mm-hmm. Uncle Ben. Well, maybe he'll have the Quaker oatmeal <laughs> guy because he kind of looks like Uncle Ben, and that'll be a nice trade-off. Yeah, he's got the hat. Yeah. Uh, well, well played. Well played. Well, now that we've now that we've all gotten acquainted here, um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier just ended, guys. It's over. What do we think here? Ryan, what, what's your, as, a, as the Captain America guy, what's going through your mm-hmm. head? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think that what's going through my head right now is, first of all, I will, t- I will say overall, loved it. I mean, let's, let's just leave it out in the open. I loved it. Um, I will say, though, it did feel at times, this, this last episode, that they were kind of rushing to, like, finish the present you know what i mean like we got to wrap things up here here's your gift moving on like it did feel moments like that but when they hit home with like a real moment when they really landed with like you know uh with falcon appearing in the full full outfit like all those moments were so justified and it was it was so beautiful it was just it was great and 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 so there are some real moments in here, but I did feel it was rushed. And the other thing is they did drop hints, but I feel like they didn't give enough of a hint to really base any sort of breadcrumb to follow. You know what I mean? Like they're just like, this, this here's your hint. And you're, and it's like, okay. It wasn't like WandaVision Where do you go all, from here? Like where, where, where the do you possibilities go? Possibilities were endless. Where it, you yeah. Know, M, like uh, not M theory. What is it called? Um, the M series like that could possibly still open up. Uh, we could be looking at, you know, um, mm. Doctor Strange and Wanda. I, I felt like WandaVision had a lot more time where I felt like the last two episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier were rushed. And especially the last episode, not this newer one, but the one from last week, I felt like there wasn't enough time or care to really properly talk about Sam's story. And I felt like it was a fight between, uh, you know, 
getting Bucky to kind of mm. heal and then getting Sam to kind of come to terms with not just accepting the mantle of being Captain America and what that means, but what it means as a black man in the United States being Captain America. I feel like honestly, this series tried to have that discussion, but it do it didn't do it really well. And I'm kind of disappointed because um, I think it's um, Malcolm Mac, uh, Malcolm Spellman that did a lot of the writing for these two episodes. And I felt like it would, it just fell short to me. It really mm-hmm. fell short to me. Like I think I talked to uh, Ryan about it last week. It felt like there was, there were a lot of moments and hints throughout the series where we're going to delve a deep dive into Sam's personal experience of recognizing like he's an Avenger and he can't even get a bank loan. He has saved the world. He has risked his life. He's not a super soldier. He's just an everyday man. And he couldn't even get a fucking bank loan. So that's already, if we talk about discrimination in America and being a black man in America, you're already less likely to get a loan. You're already less likely to, you're already more likely to be rejected for things like that. But Sam, who's not only a Mm -hmm. military vet, he already does community work with other uh, ex-military vet. And he's the fucking Falcon. He can't get a loan. And he can't get respect. It just felt like that was the that was kind of yeah, like I mean, the conversation, but it wasn't done well. It felt like at times Sam was quite clueless to mm-hmm. a lot of the a lot of that. Like it just kind of like I don't like what do you mean? I don't mm-hmm. understand. What I will what I will say what and I totally I totally hundred percent agree. But what I will say I will say is there are still some genuine. Uh, delivery of it that that Marvel yes. did an honest attempt, you know, and and you can't discredit that in my opinion. Like I I feel like they they went there. Did they did they go into the deep end of the pool? No, they stayed they stayed in the shallow. And I think it's because they wanted to keep uh, they wanted to keep again. They only had the six episodes, so to to take it further, I don't know. I feel like they they may have felt like okay. Like we want to go there, but we can't go there all the way. We we have we have a focused, very focused story. We need to keep going on, and 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 that's the way they did it. I mean, we can't. I can't speak for them. I just feel like it was an honest approach. It creates conversation, which, in my opinion, is good. Um, but I agree with you, Anna. It didn't. It didn't go far enough. I think they could have definitely gone further. But in the end, it was still a genuine, Listen, honest approach. I will give approach. you that they tried. I would almost rather that they didn't. Because even for me, uh, when, like, Bucky mm-hmm. basically, like, uh, like word vomits. Like, oh, by the way, bro, like, I committed a microaggression. I'm going to give you, like, an uh, apology. Okay, sorry. Okay, thanks. Bye. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, it, it just don't do it. If you're not able to talk about the nuances of race and what that means for someone like Sam and what that means, like, of, of just, of not just being a Captain America, of reimagining mm. Captain America his way. Because that's what it was. You know, Sam is at this weird crossroads where America is very broken, but obviously, you know, as the audience, we are aware that America is very o- broken, but in the series, that's not made very evident. So they made an attempt, but it was such a passive attempt. To me, it felt quite lazy. i have almost rather that they didn't have the discussion because it mm. felt very rushed and kind of dropped because you know, Sam wasn't really, it, it just felt very, quite scripted. It, it didn't seem genuine or real to me. And I think what it was, it felt kind of like a fight to wrap mm-hmm. up these stories really fast because we have to now move on and he's, it's no longer Fa- Falcon Winter Soldier. It's Captain America and Winter Soldier. That's what, what it felt like. Okay. We gotta, we gotta move. We gotta keep it pumping. Mm-hmm. We gotta keep it pumping because we gotta pump out a movie. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. We got, we have to fast track Sam to accepting this new responsibility, but you know, reg- like that being said, I, yeah. I see it for what it is, which is, you know, we got we only have six episodes. We really got to move on. You know, there was the conflict, Sam and Bucky overcome the fo- conflict and they were able to, they were able to evolve. So Bucky evolved into recognizing that revenge is not healing, but accepting himself as a whole person is healing. And Sam has to accept that he can be his own version of Captain America and the, and America's version of Captain America as a black Mm -hmm. man. And he can still be both. He can still be the Falcon in in his own way. Mm -hmm. You brought up a good point there about how it's like the, um, the, this is what's wrong with America. And we're going to show that in this. And like you said, 
we, the audience, know this already. And the characters, it's, it's weird. The characters are reacting like it's their first time learning these things about America. Like, oh, I can't get a bank loan. Oh, politicians are corrupt. Oh, what's this? What's going on? Uh, and it was cool to kind of see it in a way where it's like Falcon's eyes are being opened to just how big yes. the responsibility of being Cap is. Um, but you're right. It's like, it's like they walked it to a certain point and whether it was like, I don't know, were they afraid of going too dark because they wanted to be more mass appeal or were they afraid of sounding too unpatriotic? But it's like, I love this speech that Falcon gives at the end. Uh, Yeah. And and it's, it's what, it's what we needed. And it's what like these characters needed to hear those senators and stuff. But, you know, apart from the Senator just kind of, putting on a sad face, like, oh, gee, sorry, sir. Like, it's, I don't know what impact that's going to have. And now, you know, it's sounding like these are really just yes. Sam's first steps as Captain America. Uh, so maybe they're building towards him doing something that's going to be broader. Because I thought from, like, episode one brought up that bank loan thing. And ha- with the, the gift of hindsight now, I thought raising money to save that boat was going to be a yeah. much bigger deal than it ended up being. <laughs> and, and at the end, they had that great looking barbecue with the shrimp and that amazing pecan pie. Oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I think everything's fine. Okay. They have the pecan pie. It's all good. So I don't know if there was something that I missed where it's like their financial problems are over now. But it is it is very like we wrapped it up in this six. And at the same time, we're, we can't wrap it up in this six. So stay tuned. Like it's it's really weird. They straddled yeah. an odd line. With I, that and again, time. like we're at a point where, yeah, maybe maybe whatever it could be finances, but they were limited to six episodes, or maybe it was a choice. Like we can do this in six episodes, but if you're gonna tell the story, take the time to tell the story. And if you're not able to talk about racism, prejudice, and a lot of these issues, like they are complicated issues. And and I think partly, Fantasia, you are right. It could sound unpatriotic. Also, they're in, in Disney. They're uh, it's a it's Disney at the end of the day. You know, we're well aware the platform we're watching yeah. it on. So there are, you know, limitations here that they can't go too far off the deep end. But I almost rather they I almost rather they either waited or maybe I don't know. I, I, I think we'll probably never know. Definitely could have been done better, but six episodes didn't feel enough to really get Sam to evolve in the way that I hoped. Only because uh, Sam almost felt like um, like a Sims character. He was just experiencing the world for the first time. And it's like, what the fuck is... Like, do you not live here? Do you not... Like, did you... Are you okay? Did you just apparate? Imagine there's a scene where he gets into a pool and then somebody takes yeah, out the ladders like, and he's just like... <laughs> I, don't, I mean, he lives in the sky all the time. I mean, that's about so maybe does. you know, being gone in a blip, well, you forget. You forget yeah. stuff. You forget stuff. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. I will. Okay, but let's let's talk about one thing here that I really want to that I do really want to land. Um, one thing I was very excited about, and I feel like they 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 again. This is goes into that whole conversation of could have gone further. Again, I love that they approached the history of Captain America. Like they, they were like, as someone who, as someone who loves Cap's story overall, they could have gone so much further. Like they could have gone for the Secret Warriors and introduced other characters like the Destroyer, um, and talked about like how sketchy yeah. what the government did was, like experiment experimenting with people. Like the when they introduced Isaiah Bradley, and you guys again. And come back to Infinity Rewatch and listen to that podcast because it was it was exciting. Like the fact that they dropped in a, an iconic character like Isaiah Bradley and really brought that to conversation. The concept was brilliant, and the actor they got and the tone they set, all the pieces were in place. And and again, I think like you guys said, I think they're who knows. We'll never really know why they just they just didn't take it forward. But what I will say is by placing these things where they did and the concept of it brilliant i like yes give me more of that cap history um and then like i said even seeing um falcon assume the captain america uniform yeah they did that uniform justice like it looks so good i loved it even if you you compare it to john's Mm -hmm. to john's captain america outfit where john's captain america outfit was very rigid it was very rigid and structured so if you look at like um 
like the A emblem here, it's like half of the A is on the strap and the other half is on the chest. So it's like for him to be complete, he needs to have the full suit. Where Falcon, it was just a seamless suit. It, it felt it felt very much a part of him where John, where I felt like a John, the suit wore him, where Falcon or like Sam, he like he owned the suit. It was part of him. It was seamless. Like I love that the wings were incorporated. I just, it felt right in every way where John's, you maybe, it, maybe it wasn't done on purpose. Even the physicality was a lot more restrictive. He, even the way he used the shield, John needed the shield. Even with the serum, John needed the shield. It was still always attached. He was always looking for it. And Sam didn't. Sam could drop it and he could still fight. It's, um, what's that? The mm -hmm. MMA fighter, Jean, Jean-Pierre or Jean... Jean, Jean St. Pierre. Oh, uh, George St. Pierre. And, you know, he dropped. George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> George St. Pierre. When he dropped the. the That to me was very impactful. When he dropped the shield and he kind of kicked it or like put it aside and he just kept fighting. He doesn't need the shield. He doesn't need to be a super soldier. And that's what made Steve Rogers mm -hmm. so special. Yes, he had the super soldier serum, but Steve Rogers had an unbreakable uh, moral compass. He had a clear understanding of what's right and wrong. And although Sam is not a super soldier, Sam has that, that unbreakable understanding of right from wrong, morality. The difference, and you see that with John. John had to think about saving those people, those senators, or, having, or taking revenge on Carly. Sam would have never had to think about it. He would have saved those people. And that's what he did. He, he didn't go after Carly until the very end. Yeah, and there's even like a... Something about the front of John's suit, there's, yes. a, there's a horizontalness to the design of the suit. It looks very much like yes. a Civil War era jacket, which kind of is telling because he's, you know, that era is not America anymore, just like how John himself is not America anymore. And you're right, Sam is, he's so indicative of what we need because you don't need powers to do what he does. In fact, that makes him even yes. more powerful. Uh, and I mean that in metaphorically, yeah. not like I can punch the Hulk powerful because he's doing what Cap is doing with the same virtue, with the same gusto, but he doesn't have Dr. Erskine's drugs all up in his blood. So he mm -hmm. is as pure Captain America as you can get. Well, even that line at the end, I'm willing to die for this country. I could die. He's he's a lot more aware of his own mortality than probably most Avengers that are, you know, you know, like Bucky with his bionic arm and his super soldier serum, like he's a lot more aware of his mortality. So I think that makes him more dangerous. To me, that's more dangerous mm -hmm. than anything else. Cause it's like, you know, he's obviously willing to put it all in the line. And I think, you know, we got to see those glimpses throughout the series where Sam, you know, Sam has always had it in him be because of his background and rehabilitation with soldiers that he's able to be kind of that support system is able to see the full picture. And it was nice for Sam to really come full 360 and realize like, I've always had this in me. It's always been there. Even that montage of him kind of practicing the shield and even the, the running, the running part. I mean, this is supposed to be kind of like a throwback to on your left. <laughs> on your left. Uh, yeah. But even not to realize like I can still do this. I can do this. It's always been there. I just need to make it my own. I need I need to be my version of Captain America, whatever that is. And even that moment where it's like, oh, it's Black Falcon. No, it's Captain America. Yeah. yeah. That was it was yeah. it was uh it was the right kind of cheese when I love when they, when they delivered that line. It was just like it's just that moment we yeah. all and this is where I think Marvel has been doing some incredible writing in terms of in terms of as if Marvel's talking to you is, is, is the best way I can kind of describe it. It feels like, like, you know, we're all having that moment and then Marvel just says it out loud. You know what I mean? And I, mm -hmm. I don't know how yeah. you write that. I have no idea how you can get that to line up your audience perfectly and then have that person just say what everyone's feeling, but that's not an easy feat, not mm -hmm. an easy feat. And Marvel's been doing it so gracefully. Um, just having these kind of cheesy moments. But what I will say about the Falcon too, that I love in terms of the physicality, because like when you want to scale a fight, um, first of all, Winter Soldier, when George St. Pierre fights Cap for the first time on the ship, that fight scene's awesome. And it really goes to show how in control Cap is of his momentum and his abilities. Um, what I love in this one with 
Falcon is he, because he's not powered, he has to throw his body weight more into these attacks. So he's doing more high acrobatic moves because, you know, I love how he uses his jetpack to like, you know, body check some people in like into walls and stuff. Cause he's not dealing with people on his, his level. He has to deal at a, a lower, uh, higher hand, higher handicap. So it's awesome to see yeah. that the fight choreographers are kind of throwing in all his body weight and he's got to really deal with it. And I love too, when the, one of the flag smashers are just hitting him, he's got to be like a turtle shell and just like shield, shield up because these guys are, you know, can punch holes through walls. Right. I don't think his wings have ever yeah. looked better either. It, they did, like, oh, yeah. The yes. stuff he was doing with them. That scene where he clipped the wings down yeah. to the ground, mm -hmm. it, it just, I don't know. It was it was really good. I mean, I think this series has done an excellent job proving that you don't have to be super powered to be powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, um, she, what are they called? The Dora, Dora Milaje? Yeah, Dora Milaje. Dora Milaje, yeah. the, yeah, the Dora Milaje. They easily beat John. <laughs> easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So, I mean, the series already made a point to prove you don't know, you don't need to be super powered or, you know, super juiced up as a, uh, uh, with super soldier serum to be powerful. Mm -hmm. You just need to, you, need yeah. to be you know, actually that moment, that moment, I, I definitely got to play on, play on that because there's the oh, way they broke John Walker's pride. Oh, oh man. Know. They don't they're not even super soldiers. <laughs> we all <laughs> felt that. Like... We all felt that. And it just like, and like, and it just, and not only did we feel his pride broken, but we were astonished at the level of strength that Dora Milaje flexed. Like, like the, the fact yes. that he couldn't get the spear out with the shield and she just like one handed, like, pink, like just nothing. It was yep. Oh. They disarmed. They basically disarmed Bucky. <laughs> oh yeah! Like these women are truly unstoppable. No super solar serum is gonna knock anything down. So I love that they've already made that point. It's like it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It doesn't and what matter. I love is that they're not even like high ranking Dora Milaje. You know, they're not like Okoye or one of the captains. They're just they're just part of the army. And they're still that good. Like I love yeah. when, like in in Star Wars, when there's like a random stormtrooper who can do something really cool, like that baton guy. That's what that felt yeah. like. And it's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. the Dormilaji are so good that even the pawns on that chessboard can take down John Walker. Yes. Well, to be fair, to be oh, I, that's actually my to be fair thing. though, the Dormilaji are the king are the king's personal guard. Like they're they're but they're all ranked like. They're all of equal training, but yes, uh, uh, Koye is like the top Dora Milaje, but the rest of them, they're all like equal. And that unit is designed to be the king's personal guard at all times. Whatever the king wants, wherever the king goes, Dora Milaje goes with him. And that's why we got to see that perfect yeah. Civil War moment where we got the Dora Milaje and, and, you know, she's like, move or I'll move you. Like it's yeah. oh, yes. just pure justice. It's and so she good. got her, you know, that must have been like gnawing at her because like you said, that's her job is protect the king. Guess what? T'Chaka was the king. She couldn't protect him from Zemo. Mm -hmm. So now's her chance to kind of make good on that. So that's been brewing in her for however many years yes. it's been. So I'm sure that was like a solid arc for her too, to get that done. Mm -hmm. Now I have a question. I normally have questions about comic books because uh, Ryan knows a lot more about them than I do, but I have a question about helicopters and either one of you, you both probably have more helicopter experience than I do. Cause here's the thing. I love that helicopter chase scene. Yeah. That was great. I loved its pieces. I know zero about helicopters, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> that when you need to pull up, there's not a thing that comes up on the dashboard that literally says pull up. <laughs> Am I wrong? Nope. <laughs> So uh, I don't know that much. I just know, like, in terms of physics, they should not be flying. <laughs> but <Fair. laughs> what do you think Fair. about it? You have, like, two propellers. <laughs> but anyways, I don't I don't think that that was right. I mean, I thought the whole kind of helicopter scene was like, put your put your earbud in. <laughs> it's like, oh, in the middle of the hospital, like, let me pull my earbuds. <laughs> but it, like, it felt a little... It was a, a bit of a reach. I would, I would agree. It's all about tying that I mean, bow, like, just yeah, wrapping it up. Like <laughs> That's what it is. It's just yeah. wrapping it up. You know, I will say though, he, he yeah. does have access, and Red Wing is is like this little AI, as as Fantasia was mentioning it to me when we watched it this morning. 
um, you know, it's his Jarvis, right? So it's natural that, you know, the bird can text or tweet away, if you will. Uh, mm, <laughs> just wow, like, you just <laughs> broke the internet. Tell me, tell me who can fly a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. We do have, we do. I was like, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh yeah, no. You need help? Yeah. Okay. I'll totally help you. Know. Um, we do have a friend though that fixes helicopters. So if we do need that verification, yeah. maybe we'll get a quick clip of, of him, our friend Dave being like, yeah, that's how it is. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, we need yeah. an expert. Yeah. If anybody we out there is a expert. helicopter expert, please tell us if your helicopter tells you to pull up when you need to do so. Because I would I love will, to know if that's I will say, I will say it probably says low altitude. And then yeah. you have to, you know. Or yes, I feel or like, like at least like the there's a little dial where any professional pilot can look at it and she can be like, oh, I am at low altitude. I should fix that. Look, like, <laughs> you know. I think there should be a blinker that says like, what are you doing? And then just yeah. constantly flash that. <laughs> like, are you still awake? It's like the Netflix <laughs> thing when you, when you fall asleep on Netflix and it's like, Hey, do, do, you, do you still want to watch Cobra Kai or should I just get out of here? Are you still, are you still watching the question of shame? The question of shame. <laughs> now let's oh, all, so I, I'm going to ask us all to channel our inner Ozzy Osbournes here for a minute. Like, like any normal Friday night. Uh, because we need Absolutely. to talk about Sharon. Yes, the power broker. I mean, you know, they made it. It was kind of obvious, but okay. Now, first <laughs> it of all, it was kind of obvious. It was kind of obvious. I personally did. It was like, am I the power worker? Well, am I the power broker? I don't know. <laughs> but like, okay, but like, here's the thing though. This is why I feel like it was kind of like, okay, we need to wrap the story up. Because in my opinion, it would have been better if they like, if you saw a text of like the actual name of the power broker and it was like Norman Osborne, just to throw it out there and yeah. and have and have her be in communication there. But for her to be like the central person that's running the show, I don't buy it because she's supposed to be an agent all cloak and dagger. Why is she like the big center name running this organization? That makes no sense to me. See, I don't think she is. I think her phone call was to somebody who is on an even playing field with her or possibly higher. No, yes, the phone call at the end, yes, but as far as Carly knew, and as far as that scene delivered, that scene delivered us with Carly being like, oh, you're the power broker. And it's like, eh. yes. We didn't necessarily, and to be honest, I don't know why I don't necessarily buy that Sharon's, the, like the motivation for Sharon to be the power broker. I get that she's bitter because... You know, she might not. So then, why are you asking for a pardon if you don't care and you're the power broker and you basically own this fucking city? Then why the fuck do you care? Why do you care about a pardon? You live in your best. And country. I'm this a little is why bit Anna lost. should be here, people. This is why Anna should be here. <laughs> Anna, you should be. It just felt like the motivation didn't make sense. It didn't make sense because, like, okay, fine. You know, she was put on exile, so I can see her being bitter. But like, you're gonna become now a, a, a like a giant like like the kingpin you want to be a the kingpin now and if you are then why do you care about a part what do you care like what what is what is the, it just felt like the motivation was lacking here like if if her search is power and control then it was lost if the search was i want revenge then that was lost it just felt again a little lazy maybe you know maybe ryan's right or maybe fantasia is right that sharon is not really the power broker maybe as the audience and carly were making the assumption that she is but even still like i don't really understand sharon's character then i don't understand her motivation or where she was there. yeah I... she was just kind of like um hey we need help tap in <laughs> like, I, I need right. you guys to refresh my memory because i don't remember why she's bitter like what's she upset about well, what happened was, she, if you remember from Captain and the, uh, no, was Captain Winter Civil Soldier? War was the last time yes. we saw her. Captain though, right? Winter Soldier. Was it? It was when, no, this was with Sam and Bucky in the car. So maybe it Civil was War. Captain America Civil War. Yeah, it was Civil War. So this is when Cap refused to sign the Sarkovia mm -hmm. Agreement. So Cap was like essentially kind of kicked out um that's why he kind of went away so sharon 
broke the law and gave Cap his shield back and helped him escape and all this stuff. So she was found out. Um, I think she, she got court-martialed, so she she ended up exiling herself to, shoot, what's that town? Madripoor. Oh, yeah. Madripoor. And then now becomes the king ping of Madripoor. Which is, which, I, in my opinion, if you know Madripoor from the comics, it's like virtually impossible for her to climb the rankings that quickly. Like, it's just not possible. It just feels weird. And it's also because it's like, uh, um, what's her name? Not Betty. Veronica. Uh, uh, no, Steve Rogers, Peggy? like, mm. girlfriend. Oh, Peggy. It's just Peggy's like, is she Peggy's yeah. niece? Or granddaughter? Niece. Niece? So, so I'm assuming she grew up with her aunt Peggy and aunt, you know, Peggy being again, like all about what's right. This is wrong. So her niece is going to be now some like villainous kingpin. I don't know. It just felt really we- like, so, weird. So, so here's what we know though, from the show, from, from all of Falcon and Winter Soldier at this point, she says that she doesn't believe in superheroes because that was Zemo's thing is that. There shouldn't be there shouldn't be superhumans. There shouldn't, and that's that was his mission. His mission was to end that. And then she, and then when we saw Sharon, she was kind of on the same boat, and she seemed upset that, about the whole John Walker thing. And that's the scene we got with Bucky when she's like, "So about John Walker is the new Captain America? What do you think?" And he's like, "Don't get me started." So and then that's where the comment kind of came, like, "Yeah, I don't believe it." So then why is she, why is she running? as the power broker. Like, I just feel like, because like the end, they kind of pitch that she is working with somebody, but for, but the spotlight kind of went the, when she was facing Carly, the spotlight kind of went on her as being the power broker. So it's like, yes. th that's where the confusion kind of takes place for me. Yeah. I I'll like, I'll just say, I feel like the, the revelation that it's her, I'm cool with it being like a like a cliffhangery thing, like stay tuned to find this out. And I, I like the idea of a hero going bad because I don't think, as far as I can remember, I don't think MCU has really given us that yet. So I dig this idea. Uh, but you're right. It, it put the spotlight on her when I don't think it should have. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like it was yeah. the post credit scene was her. And that makes sense. Cause this feels like a post credits thing. Um, but if they had waited to drop that reveal until the post credits, I think it might've been more impactful. I don't know. I'm, I'm still on the fence about Sharon. Cause she wasn't anybody who was always on my radar, you know, like Sharon's not one of those characters that I'm like, man, I got to know what she's up to. So the fact that she comes back and then she's like, psych, I'm bad. Sort of. Um, that, I don't know. It's really baffling, but I like that they are. I feel like even more so than WandaVision, they're planting seeds here. But for the first time, I feel since like Iron Man one, we don't know where the seeds are going because all all of Phase mm -hmm. one, all those post credit seeds, all those Easter eggs were pointing at an Avengers crossover is happening. Kids, stay tuned. And then all of Phase two. Like halfway through phase two, we already knew Infinity War was coming. So everything became about, we're going to get the gems together. We're going to get Thanos. It's all built into that. And now, even though we don't know what this second saga is called or what it's all about, it's going to, I know it's Annihilus and Christine Everhart is going to play a big part, but you know, that's just me because I've been in talks with Kevin Feige behind the scenes, but that's neither here nor there. It's not going to happen, dude. <laughs> Christine Everhart's done. All she's right. Done, she's she did done her done news for reporting now. for the first one. You know who else we thought was done? <laughs> Batrock the Leaper. Twice. He came back. So. Oh. Uh, so, but like for the first time, we have little Easter eggs and post credits stingers that are pointing big neon arrows, but we don't know what they're pointing those arrows at. And we know multiverse stuff is happening, and WandaVision really touched on that. So there was no surprise when it was like, this is going to talk about the multiverse and it's going to connect with Doctor Strange. We weren't shocked by that because we already knew that. But this is pointing at stuff that's in the MCU's future that they haven't told us yet. And I find that exciting. And that excitement, I think, trumps my bafflement at seeing Sharon do what she's doing. And she had like a Mission Impossible mask, which freaked me out because I don't think that's ever been a thing. But she had one. 
No, it has. A Black Widow had it when she took it off in um, in Falcon and Winter Soldier. She had like you mean the, you mean just Winter Soldier? She like dressed just up in like. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Sorry. thank just you. Winter. Yes, yeah. When she yeah. pretends to be one of those people, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, like, Meh, takes yeah, it off. That's right. Here's the thing. So if we're going to talk about it, now that the cat's really out of the bag here, and we're, we're, we're already got into that scene, let's let's really talk about it. I personally think, I, I've, I've marinated with it a little bit, and here's the thing. I really hope that she may have been outed as the power broker, like as if, like, it's kind of as if her, power, her cover's been blown, but she's not the one really behind it. Like, I, I would if Marvel can creatively figure out a way to get to the source of that and like figure this out. The other thing we, we got to remember guys is that this is supposed to take place after black widow. We were supposed to see black widow first and mm -hmm. then see this movie. Right. So that's something we have to keep oh. in mind. And this is, and, and with the uh, super amazing cameo of uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus, um, you know, just amazing, amazing. I know, just mwah, just, uh, just pure awesomeness. Um, she's supposed to actually have a scene or some sort of appearance in Black Widow that totally is supposed to justify, that's what the rumor is, justify what just happened in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, that being said, okay. that being said, this is why I kind of feel like I prefer, like somehow they kind of explain who, how, why the power broker thing is. My first initial thought was Storm and Norman, uh, Norman Osborn, because he's been known to be playing with superhuman mm -hmm. formulas. That's why Green Goblin was a whole thing. Um, I'm actually kind of maybe leaning on the Kingpin a little bit here because Marvel does have, Marvel does have the Kingpin. Marvel does not have Norman Osborn. So I doubt, yeah. even though with the Sony deal, uh, which it sounds like Disney has secured another deal with uh, Spider-Man and having Spider-Man on Disney Plus and this whole thing. Um, I still think, I think it might lean more on Kingpin because Kingpin was, was even in the cartoon, uh, it was mentioned that he was looking for a superhuman army for his, his thing. So mm -hmm. that makes sense to me. And he would have the money to be able to play around with things. And the yeah. other thing is, is that originally I thought Ross, but why would Ross need access to government stuff? Because he already has it. And then I thought Norman, but Norman was known for supplying uh, weapons to the U.S. government as well. So why would he need it? Kingpin, on the other hand, is completely on the scale, like in terms of the access to none of that stuff. He'd have to. He is the correct villain. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but Kingpin is my favorite comic book character, period. Oh, I love Kingpin. He's so good. He's like the the perfect gangster. Uh, Just ruthless. What I hope the power broker is, it's kind of like Bosley. It's just a name. It's just an idea. Mm. Right? I like the idea that uh, Sharon is just another Bosley. But if she's not the Bosley, if that makes sense. Like, you know, she's just another pawn from the power, power broker to protect themselves. He or she, whoever they might be. You know, I, I like that several like many decoys like is it is it is it maybe maybe not I, I like that I rather I rather find out later who the real power broker is and and then mm -hmm. have the Avengers kind of struggle with like did we did we kill the actual power broker mm -hmm. no Fuck, I don't know and I then Kingpin's like, like making an omelet and he's like no you didn't <laughs> no you didn't right because if if you think about it if if it's the kingpin he wouldn't be a madripoor why would yeah, he be he's a got a beautiful penthouse even new york and he would be making other people do stuff for him he wouldn't he would not be lifting mm -hmm. a finger oh. that's what makes him like such a great villain you know he is ruthless if he has to be but he's smart enough to know i don't have to do this myself i can just get other people to do it they can be smart collateral. enough for a norman made for a kingpin that's that's yeah. the power broker's deal uh, he's, oh, I really hope it's him. I really do. Um, <laughs> if it is Norman Osborn, though, just guys, do me a favor. Don't tell Harry. Oh. Here's the thing, though. I There was the theory, I think you were saying, Fantasia, that it was a scrawl. You were thinking it could be a scrawl, right? Oh, yeah, that uh, that Sharon oh. could be a scrawl. Yeah, maybe. Because then they have an in in the government. And it feels like that's the one big future thing that they're really pushing a lot. Like that we keep hearing about casting for Secret Invasion. And so I could be wrong. I 
obviously I prefer the Kingpin thing because that's you know, <laughs> that just right up my alley. So I hope it's I hope it's Kingpin, but I wouldn't rule out a scroll thing either. You know what I'd like to see them do, and I don't think they've done this. Is so we we get this like cryptic phone call, right? I'd love to see a scene where there's a phone call like that, and then in a whole other movie or show, we see the other side of that same phone call. I'd love them yes. to do something like that. Yes. Or even at the end of the movie, you don't know. That's what makes it so good. You. That's why Bosley's so good. You don't know. Is this Bosley? No, not, not Bosley. What's it? Um, Charlie. Oh, shit. Charlie. Is this Charlie? Is this it? That it's just Charlie could be anybody. Yeah. But Charlie could just be some dude that's in New York making his omelet. <laughs> oh, did Charlie, did Charlie number 83 die? Okay, put another one. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, scroll the scroll theory makes sense to me because we have the concrete evidence, like you said, that Secret Evasion is coming. And we do know that the scroll tried to make Super Scroll. So you could put the two together and kind of play on that. But this is, again, this is that Marvel investment that I've been talking about in the sense of that you are now wrapped in it. And this is why you're coming up with like theories like Kingpin, because you want it, you want that. And I and yes. I think that this is the beauty of what Marvel does is now now the internet's going to be spending the the next i don't know months trying to figure out who it is it could be dr doom for all we know but why would dr doom be involved like how could you even possibly build a story and bring in dr doom but my point is people will go there people will go there because they just they're that wrapped in it yeah it's true i think marvel has done an excellent job of of expanding the universe mm-hmm. into such into limitless potential for as an audience to just to even have these conversations of what if could ha- what if it's this mm. what if it's that and making connections to other stories i think that's why they've been so incredibly successful because they've allowed a lot more carte blanche than i think well i mean ryan we've had discussions <laughs> about dc but i think that's why marvel's been so successful because they're willing to uh, have a story from beginning to end and recognize that there could be connections somewhere in the middle and they're willing to put in the work to make sure that those connections make sense mm-hmm. and they continue on in smaller ways. Yeah, and there's a level of trust too. Nobody, like no director or anybody goes in there with a level of like ego and says like, no, I want my Ant-Man to be this, damn it. It's like, no, everybody's on the same page and they they all play different songs, but all those songs can fit on the same album and it doesn't feel like a random mixtape. It all feels like it's part of the same piece of music. So I I just can't stop applauding them for that. And you're right. As much as I love DC, we had a, we had our DC discussions that time too. I love me some DC, um, but they they don't play the same songs. They play a different album for every movie, and they're all great albums, but they're not a great collection. Oh yeah. You know, it's not a great box set. It's just yes. great random vinyl records that you would listen to on separate days. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I agree with you here, but, but bringing it back to the Marvel thing for a second. And Do we have albums, to? Do we have to? God, I hate speaking Marvel. Of, speaking of albums, the fact that they full circled with the Trouble Man soundtrack at the end, um, yeah. that was yes! pure fan oh, service. I love that. Mm-hmm. They did. It's such a good job. It's it's see. It's the details like that. It's the small details that just make it just so more, much more special, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? It just it shows that they care and they're trying to to build. They're trying to layer that story. That there's an evolution to these characters. Absolutely. I thought it was. Oh that. yeah. I mean, absolutely. On and then for you know going back to earlier when you're talking about details. I mean, the the things you picked up on about the outfits are just storytelling in itself like that's so crazy that you were able to like i didn't even notice that i didn't even notice that that one was rigid and the other's fluid like oh man well it was just it even like i don't know if you in this episode the fight scene they kind of did um not exactly side by side shots but you had the shot of john fighting with the flag smashers and then sam fighting with georges Georges Mm saint pierre where the flag smashers break like crack John's shield. And then you see uh, Sam fighting Jean-Jean Pierre and the shield is like Mm -hmm. solid. So, and again, it's that like 
John is is broken mentally, which has kind of been a reoccurring theme every time you yeah. see John, that John is being held together. He's physically being held together by his suit. He's He physically needs that shield because he can't, he's so broke, he's cracked. He's He's so incredibly either mentally or physically fractured that he needs to be held together and he needs the shield to protect mm-hmm. himself because he just can't stand on his own where Sam doesn't need the shield and the suit just... He wears that suit. That is that is who he is, right? He doesn't need they're 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 helpful things, but he doesn't need them. Where John needs mm-hmm. them, like even with the I, what I'm assuming what would have been the Patriot suit. What what is it that the Val called him? Oh, U.S. Agent. agent. U.S. Agent. I, what is this supposed to be the Patriot? Even his new suit, it was still very held together. It was that like the lines and the lapel. It was still mm-hmm. held together. Like it doesn't, you as an audience are being told this man is very fractured, very fractured. No, absolutely. I actually, yeah, we should talk, we should spend a little more time on the U.S. agent side of the story as, mm-hmm. as he was kind of the main villain, if you think about it, like he, he was the big problem. Um, I, I love what they did with him. First of all, I, I love the journey he had to a point where this is one of those characters where the actor delivers such a performance that people hated him in real life. Like it went so far as people hated his guts. And they're like, you're not the Captain America. You're not him. You can't be him. Like, and I love that. And I, I love that because that means again, Marvel, Marvel's got you, baby. Marvel's got you. And you're just in it. You're in it for the long haul. And the what I did, what I love with his character, and and again, just I, this is a, this is that great question of like not everyone can be Captain America. It's it's you know it's that's the key to Cap's story is not everyone can just put on the shield and and the suit and have the powers and that's it. Like you guys were saying earlier, um, what I love about this character is it really shows the 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 instability of the formula in terms of like someone who is like um, is someone someone who takes it who is unshakable versus the person who isn't. And, and John, like, I love the little things where like, when he's faced with the decision, he kind of has like a little head twitch and he's just like, like, he kind of like can't process things properly. And then like, he just goes like whatever he feels and hunt, he goes 110%. There's no truly understanding. There's no true understanding. It's just action is what he does. And, yes. and I love that. I think that they, that they did a great job bringing in this character and, and again, bringing more depth to the world of Captain America and, and, and how Captain America impacts the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like with the, the you know, governments trying to recreate them, you know, and all this stuff. I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get any more mutant nods that at least that I saw. I remember rumors and, and set photos of like a woman in a hood that we'd never, that, that we've never seen, but I don't know. Like, I just don't know where all this stuff is coming from. The rumor, do you think, rumors are out of there. Do you think we'll ever get Marvel to say the word mutant? Like, I just need them to say the word mutant. Just say it. Just say just it. Start. Say the word. Like, honestly, you know what I mean? It's like, that's all I need. Just fucking say the word mutant and I'll be okay. You know, I don't I don't have to wait for a movie. I don't need to wait for a crossover. Just say the word. Yeah, yeah. I would I would love for them to say the word. Or even like weapon and X in the same conversation. Like, <laughs> yes. you know, like, yes. like just just give me something, right? But like to be fair though, talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier, going back to like the big the big opening uh question you had there, Fantasia, as someone who's a cap fan here, I think This one just offered a story, just offered a story. It just offered a story in the world of Cap. It expanded on things, but did it shatter, did it shatter dimensions like WandaVision did? Uh, No, I don't think it did, but I don't think it needed to. Isn't that a video game? X-Men Shattered Dimensions? Or no, that's Spider-Man. That was a Spider-Man, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crafty yeah. devil. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing though, is is my point is is that this was just a fun, but also just a fun look in the world of Captain America, but at the same time bringing in some honest conversation. But I didn't think it was going to drop anything super massive. Was I hoping for it? Yes. But was I expecting it? No, I don't. I think this was just a great story. What I do think, though, is Loki's going to really break open the ground and and really open the doors. Yes. Yeah. Loki's going to be like WandaVision yes. in that we're going to have 20 new theories every episode. And 
It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be a bananas show. Uh, they did something in this finale though that I want to call attention to because I think it answers a uh, a gripe or it answers like a nitpick that I feel like comic book fans or like superhero fans have been talking about since forever. And it's that whole nitpick of like, why, why are superheroes always so like, like whiny and, 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 you know, like, why is Batman so serious? Why is Captain America so serious? Why do Spider-Man and Superman walk around moping and being like, I wish I didn't have all these powers. And, and, you know, people always say like, Oh, it would be so much fun. Why are they always moping? Why, why are they so angsty about it? Right. This episode answered that question for me. And I loved how they did it because when, my beautiful Elaine, my my uh, the love of my life, Elaine comes in and 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 says those things to John Walker, and he gets his new suit, and then she walks out and she's like, "I'll be seeing you," because she's the cool new Nick Fury type now. Uh, John Walker does this thing where he does what all those fans say, and he's like, "I'm stoked! I'm Captain America! I'm ready! I'm so excited!" And I'm like, "That's creepy. That creeps me out that he's that excited to be a superhero," and that's the answer that's why they don't that, that's why there's all that angst in comics that's why there's all that like oh i wish i never had these powers in comics because those people those heroes they understand the responsibility that comes with that power and walker does not uh and i think that's what the contessa yeah. sees and she sees he's an easy target and she's like yeah come work for me uh so when he gets all giddy and he's there with his wife and he's just like yeah look at me i'm captain america babe this is so cool i'm like this can only go wrong but this is, this oh, is so I think that question has finally been answered by the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's definitely sad to see that he doesn't realize that he is essentially a dumb puppet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, no tea, no shade, but John is not the cleverest. He just, like, this is a little dark. <laughs> Like, oh, he might have problems with his helmet. You know, it's a helmet. It's like, okay, girl, like, we got it. He's a little mm -hmm. slow. Like, I just felt like John, you know, again, a very fractured person. And in, in what way? You know, because we got little hints of, like, the things we did when he was talking to Lamar, I guess, uh, missions that they had that they've kind of touched on extremely vaguely, I think, in the first two, like, the I think it's, like, the first episode. But it didn't go anywhere. So, you 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 know that something along the lines has happened to already fracture this individual and then Lamar's death. It felt like Lamar was essentially well. Okay, I, this is something that I actually wanted to talk about because you have two separate experiences here. You have Sam kind of learning about the Black American experience, and you have John, who basically the people of color around him, including his wife, his best friend, and Lamar's parents, are only there to make him feel mm -hmm. good. They're only there to make him feel good. Like Mar was only there to make him feel good, to keep him structured, to keep him balanced. In that moment, that speech is like, you're ready to work. Get it together. Ready to work. John's like, yep, yeah, okay. Like John could not pull it together in that moment to put on the suit and go out there as Captain America. Lamar had to make him feel good. So to me, the death of Lamar wasn't like, oh, I lost my best friend. I, I'm, I'm sure that's part of it, but it felt like I lost... Um, my support system. My support, like my support. I lost essentially like my caretaker or like my, it, it just, it, it, to me, the the relationship already felt a little one dimensional because you didn't really get to know very much about Lamar anyways. And Lamar, oh, the only time Lamar would talk, it would be pep talks to John mm -hmm. or to reassure John, to make John feel good, to, you know, stand up for John. It was never to challenge John like Sam would challenge Bucky which would, it, that was their dynamic, which oh, I told Ryan in the beginning, I really hope it would be kind of like, um, what is it called? Grumpy old <laughs> men, like, like a grumpy old men dynamic, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, where they're best friends, but they secretly hate each other. But with Lamar and John, it's like Lamar just existed to purely to make John feel good. He had no other purpose. So it felt like he lost his only thing keeping him mm -hmm. sane. Only thing keeping him safe. And what little we got of Lamar, it we can already see he would have been a better candidate to be what to be that cap stand in. 
I know. I know. I was like, why didn't they fucking pick Lamar? He's so much cooler. <laughs> like, what was going on on testing day where Lamar was like, oh, shit, I failed the math portion. I don't know. Like, what went wrong that day? Yeah. I know. I was, well, I thought I was like, because they made John sound like, oh, he's such a genius. This guy, like, you know, beat all the physical testing. You know, I thought, oh, he must be juiced up. <laughs> Has to be. No, like, but then what, what was Lamar missing? He just seemed way more interesting than John did. John is, was a mess. He looked like someone that needed intense, like more so than Bucky's. Like, sir, you need some intense therapy. Yeah. Oh. Bucky is okay. You are not. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and that speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they did pick a guy with blonde hair and blue eyes, right? Like they, they did. Uh, yeah. The government, the government was just like, and this is the guy. Let's go with him. We yeah. need, we need the no Captain America. Who in this room fits my criteria? <laughs> Oh, I, I love him. Yeah, he looks good. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, no, it just yeah, I, I definitely agree with you guys. Like, I don't know how the testing worked. Like, did he throw the shield better? And they're just like, yep, that's that's him right there. That's the that's the, one. <laughs> that's the one. Or you know what they did is that they made everybody wear the Captain America suit. Like, which one has America? Yes, <laughs> I like I like how this one John, curves. You, got you know, it just. Well, well, Lamar, your perfect. ass is nice, but it looks more like Greenland, and that's not what we're going for. <laughs> no, no, we need we need a perky little. <laughs> what but what was interesting though, because in Marvel Marvel's Agents of Shield, which you know, for me as a fan, I like to cherry pick my lore from that. Even though I think I don't know, because I think even Kevin Feige's backpedaling now. He's just like, yeah, it's not as much canon as you might want it to be. <laughs> but but uh, but I, I will say there's they do have like a, a in the uh, like American government they have a Captain America test, um, and and the school plays on it in in Spider Man Homecoming. But they do have a test, and then uh, in the storyline they did in Marvel's Agents of Shield, that test eventually turned that person into Death Law. Um, oh. which was really, really cool to see. Uh, so, so yeah, I was pretty happy to see that. Um, yeah, but I, I really feel like they could have, again, they could have gone a little further in some stories there. And overall, I still love this, sh- this, this show. I think it's necessary. It needed to be there. Um, it's perfect. Like it's, it's perfect for, for the amount of enjoyment I got out of it. And I mean, first of all, Zemo, oh, they they did two small things and they fixed that character and made him one of the the classiest and the coolest villains and like for me now on my villain list I yeah just that you know just mm, you know just dancing in magic yeah. the fact that the fans were all like I love Zemo dancing so much Marvel was like here's an hour of it just go crazy just have a good time <laughs> but what I think what I love about this like Zemo if you if before this show if you said Tell me your favorite Marvel villains. Guaranteed Zemo, maybe maybe just almost the middle, but he'd be on the lower end of the list. Because of this show, guaranteed he's like in the top five. Guaranteed. Top five villains. Like, come on, let's go. Yeah, he's the new Loki, like we talked about uh, yeah. I think two weeks ago. Like he's, he's just stepping up to that Loki plate now. Mm-hmm. I love it. He's, again, you don't need to have superpowers to be a supervillain. And Zemo, I, to me, Zemo was fantastic. Even at the end where it's like, I'm in prison. I still fucking blew these assholes up. Yeah. Oh, was it Zemo? Was it Val? Who knows? No, no. He, didn't, he didn't even have to try. He's just like, he's like, oh, by the way, he's like, he's like, Winter Soldier killed your parents. And then like, just like flipped them all out, like made them all attack yeah. each other. Like he is a classy villain and all they needed to do was in this one just let him play with the other characters and then give him a purple mask and and that's it that's yes. all i had to do yes doesn't it, i it gave me very like lex luther vibes which is the lex luther that i want which is someone that's very calculated it's like i don't i don't have to do much i can just i know enough i know the button to to push to make this entire thing crumble. at no like, at no apart. point in this show was he not in control at no point yeah. was he not yes. in control. He never, yes, he never had to be aggressive. He never had to threaten anybody. He was always two steps ahead of both Sam and Bucky. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I think they didn't. Honestly, Zemo was my favorite character out of the entire series. Mm-hmm. 
it was just so even at the end where he's like, oh, I didn't I'm like, I didn't think you were going to come. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm going to go back to Wakanda prison. I'll go to Wakanda prison. Yeah. Please. Like, yeah, and oh, he's, he's still kicking there. He's probably offering Turkish delight yeah. to all the Dormelage. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. hey, try this. I promise it's very good. It's good for you. Do you want to see me dance for an hour? Uh, everybody in Wakanda is going to have even more sick dance moves next time we see them because they'll learn a thing or yes. two from Baron Helmut von Zemo. Uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. But like, here's some questions for you. Like, first uh, of all, I love, I love the referring the raft again. They're bringing back the raft mm-hmm. a little bit more. It's becoming yes. more of a casual topic in the MCU. So my question is, we clearly know that Ross and Zemo both operate out of the out of the raft in terms of the now Zemo is back at the raft. So I mean, where's the Thunderbolts? Why? Again, this is where I feel like the show could have gone a little more into that. Like maybe we'll see them, maybe we won't, but it just feels like these pieces are in place very, very in a very calculated way. And I, again, like, I just feel like, I just feel like they didn't give us enough. Usually these end credit sequences or these clues they're a little more obvious, but it's one of those things where Feige's keeping it really, really subtle. I, I, I think what's happening, it's like, we're going to a new, obviously a new evolution. And, and especially at the end of that captain and winter captain American winter soldier, that, that title mm-hmm. to me, it said like, okay, I, this was to this, this six, these six episodes were to fully transition to that. Yeah for it to, to for us as an audience to move on that this is captain america sam is captain america and the winter and bucky the winter soldier mm. it felt like it was more it the series was there to mm. solidify that more than anything else and i'm assuming when we get a movie uh, like a captain america movie that will get something deeper mm. yeah that's, that's how it kind of felt as uh, watching it where it's like they were more like the it was, you know, where WandaVision was setting up for other universes or mm-hmm. other other things to come. It felt like this series was specifically to just say, like, you know, Steve Rogers' time, Steve Rogers' time is gone. It is now Sam. Like, this is Captain America. It felt like it was just trying to, it, it got us there in six yeah. episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it couldn't have said it better. And now with the news that dropped today, I, you guys have seen it, right? The news that dropped since, I think it dropped around noon that no. there is officially what? going to be a Captain America 4 movie starring Sam written by the people who wrote the show. Oh my God. Oh, no. that's, oh, oh, that, there we go. That's a fucking answer right no. there. That's our answer right there. I don't think it was about Easter eggs or opening up other universes. It was about making, like watching it. And as an audience being like, we have moved on from Steve it's now Sam, so we can get a solid movie. Holy shit! Okay, but that changes our... every. That <laughs> changes everything. Like that's well, huge. yeah, it makes sense. I'm I'm now stoked. Like yes, give me more Cap story. Now that we got oh, now absolutely. that we got Mr. Uh, Sam Wilson is the new Cap, and that give me more of that costume. <sighs> yeah, man, yes. it's gonna it's gonna be great. And I if they are building towards Thunderbolts, I personally like that they're not telling us more and that they're keeping it really close to the vest here because because of what I said earlier where all of phase one we knew everything was pointing at an Avengers crossover that's what they promised we even before Iron Man one came out they were like we're gonna do an Avengers movie soon guys don't we don't worry it's happening so I love that because this is the evil flip side of the Avengers they should play it the opposite way don't tell us jack shit till the Thunderbolts show up on screen to give us these clues and, you know, have the Contessa walking around and recruiting people with her badass purple streak of hair and being like, hey, you come come work with me. And then next thing we know, we blink and all of a sudden there's a team of supervillains and they stealth assembled. I think that would blow everybody's socks off. Oh, hands down. Yeah. So hands down. I, hope, I hope they keep playing that game. Speaking of games, it's time to play a game. And Anna, I'm going to give you the honors here to... Uh, to uh, partake in this game here so we play a game it's not even really a game because calling it a game would be very morbid but we have we have a cemetery and every time a character dies we put them in the cemetery uh, but we we come up with an idea for what their tombstone or their plotter statue looks like to fit with their character like for example uh, Jeff Bridges character in Iron Man 1 was always putting his arm around people so we figured his yeah. tombstone would have a statue just of him like that and you can take pictures with it you can go and have him put his arm around you. 
So we have three characters who bit the dust. Uh, we have Batroc the Leaper, Battlestar, and um, uh, Carly. Thank Carly. you. Flag Smasher there. Carly, Carly Morgan Powell. So yeah. what do you think on a, their memorial sites should look like in our cemetery? Okay. So for Carly, I think her, like, I'm going to go with kind of like, uh, Jesus, like Jesus, a simple carpenter, like, you know, Carly Morgan, that was a, is a, is a girl of the people. So I feel like her, it'll be like uh mama Donya where it would just be a plain, like, um, like mama Donya's like, to, uh, was it? No, it was, it was like, um, a cement block with just like her name. I feel like Carly Mor Morgenthau's would be very similar to like uh, to something simple. She was a woman of the people. Mm -hmm. One, you know, one people, one world. I would want hers to be. Do you think humble. it should say that? It would never be, it wouldn't be a statue. It wouldn't be a monument. Yeah, yeah one people, one world. Not even her name. One, Cause she was about the cause. It wasn't about her. She was willing to die. She was willing to do whatever it takes. Even she said, it's not about us. The cause is big enough that it doesn't need us even if we die. So I feel like it would just be a solid cinder block and it's just one people, one world. Mm. Right next I to I think Mama you Donia. just created the most beautiful yeah. tombstone in this cemetery so far. <laughs> we have like 30 dead people yeah. in there. You know, it, it, it's the, the humble mm. man. The humble mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Or the humble woman. I love it. Woman. What about uh, Lamar? <sighs> Poor guy. Oh, Lamar. I feel like John would do it. He would pick it and it would be like the biggest <laughs> like, uh, like oh to Lamar possible. And it would be like a statue of Lamar, like, like Buddy Jesus. Like or It would literally <laughs> say, keep up the like, great work, like, John. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like Buddy yes. Christ. It's like, hey. <laughs> it would be something like John would want to do the most lavish thing for mm -hmm. Lamar. Because you get really like it was very evident that this man really needed Lamar in every, like every moment of his life. So I feel like it would be really something very big, like a statue, like, Lam like, you know, yeah, he, he would make it ostentatious. Like, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in my weight. I'm going to throw yeah, in my no. weight on the battle star yeah. one. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. So buddy jesus thing and then underneath I love underneath in a, in a in a comic book quote bubble it says you were my cap <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and john is always leaving photos at the grave but every photo is lamar with john yeah <laughs> yes always me and john having breakfast me and john having lunch here's us at disneyland <laughs> I know you saw John and Lamar together more than you saw John and his wife. I don't even yeah. remember her name. I don't did they even say her name. I don't remember. It just felt like a, a very codependent relationship for, for John. Like John needed this yeah. man. Yeah. So I feel like it'd be very yeah. that. It's like my best friend. I gotta I gotta do the, the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> totally. That's that's mm -hmm. spot on. Uh, and then last but not least is yeah. Batrock Zelipo. Did he die? I'm pretty sure she shot him. Sharon shot him in like the, the throat, didn't she? she oh. Somebody somebody mm -hmm. shot him. There was that like No, he fell. Did he He fell and they told Sam to go get Sam to go get him. No, no, that was uh that was a flag smasher because the flag smasher fell in the uh Oh in the shit, water. you're right, sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I don't there was know like that I... that standoff. Oh shit, you're right, you're right, you're right. He did die. She did mm. shoot oh, him. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. White man be? can jump. <laughs> I could not leap over the bullet that got me. <laughs> you know what it would be? It'd be like a giant middle finger to to fucking Sam. Like fuck you, you stole me money, bitch. <laughs> Just... <laughs> With a little French flag tastefully draped across it. Uh. Yes, it's the. <laughs> it would be something. It's like <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck the falcon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two so fuck the falcon. Just a giant metal finger. One, one small step and one giant leap for the leaper. <laughs> one one small, no, no, one coming? small step for the villains, one giant leap for the leaper. There you go. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. 
Oh, I can't they took, wait they took a D-listing character, a D-listing character, and gave him purpose. That is incredible. Yes. He was definitely really fun to watch. Well, I, it, he is a, an actual mm. fighter, so I, I just actually really liked watching him in the series. I think he did a really good yeah, job. Yeah, I, would, I wasn't I would expecting him to show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he's dead now. So. Yeah, maybe some flashbacks, so he'll be like, this is the past, but I am here. <laughs> I am still oh, yeah. leaping in the past. <laughs> well, any any last uh, last final thoughts about this this crazy finale? Well, to... okay, hold on. First uh... of all, first of all, I think both of you need to just sum up your thoughts of the show, just real uh... quick. Overall, what are your thoughts of Falcon Winter Soldier? Because I did, I was able to do mine in that last little bit there, but mm-hmm. you guys need to deliver your last and final thoughts. Like your Rotten Tomato summary of this show. Yeah, we're going to deliver to the goods. Anna, you want to take it first? Yes, I would give this a 6 out of 10. I would, you know, I would say what I, what I would say about this series is that they were just trying. It was a story about two men having to fight their inner demons. Was it told in the best way? In my opinion, no. But it was nice to see an evolution of these characters and kind of de- decide and decide like this is this is the direction that I want to go and this is who I really want to be. So as an audience, I really enjoyed that because we obviously these these two specifically these two characters in in the Marvel films we didn't really get very much. You know, Bucky talks about the little you know he only had a small amount of peace in Wakanda, and Sam kind of is discovering that even though he is the superhero, he's not really valued in that way. So how does he come to terms with that? So I, I do genuinely appreciate the, what I, what I found special about the series was that you don't have to be a a super powered superhero to be good. You don't need to have powers to be good. That it was something that was very evident throughout the entire series through Zemo. So the Dora Milaje through Sam, you don't need these superpowers to be extraordinary. You know, being extraordinary comes from, it comes intrinsically from intrinsic motivation. And I think, Sam, and for Bucky, it's like, yes, he is extraordinary, but he's he's so incredibly fractured, he doesn't recognize how extraordinary he can be if he chose to just forgive himself. So it, to me, that message was fantastic. I mean, I think the series nailed that, that kind of like self-discovery, that doubt. And and as an audience member, you know, we don't, you know, oh, wouldn't it be awesome for, obviously we would, I would fucking take the super solution. Are you kidding me? I want to fucking lift a car over my head. But it was special to see like, you don't have to be that to be extraordinary. You just have to know yourself and trust yourself and you will do good. So I, I love that. It was very human. It was it was real and it was human. So I, I to me, that's what the series felt like. So I'm excited for Captain America 4 and seeing something more human where Steve Rogers sometimes lost that at times. You got you got to see a little bit that towards like Infinity War, that self-doubt, you know, that, you know, the that kind of like feeling like he let a lot of people down. Where Sam is human. Sam is human. And he's already aware. I can die. I can fail. I will do badly. I will fuck up. But I, but that's that's the point. You know, good, you know, good and evil are, things are not black and white, they're shades of gray. So I, I appreciated that because that's I think I've talked to this about Ryan. It's like there's been moments where Marvel has sort of touched on that. You know, what does it mean to be a superhero? Are you above God? Are you above the law? What are you? Can you be, you know, can you know, it's kind of discussed with the Sarkovia agreement and a little bit with, you know, that conflict with Tony and Steve. But I felt like in this series, it, it, it really kind of solidified that, like, it that's unnecessary. It is absolutely unnecessary that you can be spectacular without it. And I love that. Wow. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. I, um, I, I think that I agree with you about the message of the show. The message is beautiful. And they, even though we talked, like we talked about at the top, it, they didn't go all the way with it. They went enough where I feel like, yes, you understand what's going on here because you can't have Steve Rogers hand the shield to Sam and be like, you're the new Captain America without Sam having to ask that question. Well, like what is being Captain America in 
2021 because it's not the same as being Captain America during World War II. Those are two very different Americas. So you have to ask that question. And this whole series was kind of asking that question. What is it to be Captain America now? And it really opened up a lot of beautiful reflection of the country itself. And then sort of like beautiful looks at what it is versus what it can be and what it should be and what has been stopping it from getting there. And it's mostly been America itself. No outside forces have stopped it from accomplishing what it wants to do. And we got a lot of beautiful moments that show steps in the right direction. I mean, can we get some kind of award for the guy who plays Isaiah for his scene when he sees a statue? Because holy cow, man, holy cow, that hit me. That was so, so sweet. Uh, so I think that the, the, the message they wanted to give the world and what they had to say about being Captain America, they got it. They got it. Now, now give us more. Yeah. Now take that the next step further, because like the country itself, it is evolving and it's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and like they say in Hamilton, you know, I'm like, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy and hungry. So keep feeding the country. Keep keep doing it until it's not hungry anymore, until it's not lacking. Um, yeah. And I, I also feel like the show is exactly what a Disney Plus show needs to be. We were talking about this on Rebel Scum about like the Mandalorian and all the Star Wars shows that they have planned. And it's like, well, you're giving us so many, like Mandalorian was so great. It was like 16 orgasms in a row. So like, how do you, like, if you're giving us that constantly stream to our house, why are we going to go to the movie theater and watch your movies now? Like, what's the point? And the conclusion we came to is those movies better be something so special that you can't do it justice. And I feel like this was exactly right for what it is. And it yet it still felt like it's not quite a Marvel movie. And th that's not yes. even a knock against it. Cause it's weird. Cause it sounds like it's like, Oh, not as good as the movie. Sorry. <laughs> show. But, <laughs> and, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. Like it, it's, it's, it's there and it is what it is. But there's a Marvel movie. There's a Captain America 4, which we know is coming now. And that is going to be a different animal entirely. And it belongs where it is. And this belongs where it is. Yeah, I think that covers it perfectly. You guys you guys nailed it exactly. And that's that's why I love Cap's story. It's, it's, it's a story of being he, like what it is to be human, right? And, and what, if, what if you gave that human the ability to do whatever they wanted to do? And, and that's what makes cap so special i couldn't say it, i cannot say it as poetically as you guys did but that's but that's what it is but now that being said that being said so um you know disney plus actually came out with a small little uh commercial or i guess trailer advertising disney plus but it's the message that they brought out with it is that and they were saying that stories don't need to end they can continue they can they can expand they can evolve and I think I think Marvel is Marvel with Marvel. That is now they kind of have a better mission with Disney Plus, which is allowing stories to continue as they may. Um, and and you know I think Disney Plus owes Marvel a little bit because of that, because of what Marvel is doing with these interconnected stories. I mean, because the MCU even before Disney Plus, it was it was these movies were spectacles, yes, but they were episodic. Like everything was connected in in some way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, and I think that's the beauty part of it, like talking about Mandalorian and Star Wars. I mean, you know, just to give you guys some background, Anna is a big fan of Star Wars and, and she can she can take you guys a couple laps, you know, uh, do the Kessel Run a few times and, you know, however many parsecs. <laughs> But the, the point is, is that that Mandalorian and stories like Marvel, you can really expand, evolve and change the narrative and really do creative things like we saw with WandaVision. And 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 the other cool thing is you just tell this like human story with with Captain America and the Winter Soldier. And and now we got Loki coming up, uh, which is going to be incredible. But talking about movies and and I love how you bring this in. So I'm going to call this our little kind of end credit sequence. Um, but, um, you know, you talk about, you know, when you get content like this, uh, the movies better be special. And truth be told, once this whole COVID thing is done, guaranteed when movies open back up, I'm going to be back in those lines 
waiting to see those movies because we got the trailer and teaser for Shang Chi just before this podcast. Yes. Um, and I will say just really quick some thoughts. Uh, you know, not to run the podcast too long, but this is our little end credit sequence. Talk about a movie spectacle. Talk about something different. A fantasy martial art film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sign me up. I give take my kids money take my future grandkids money <laughs> yes. like I will I will be in the theaters just for that. take my money <laughs> just take it all but that was that was a teaser and and so hype it's going to change my list for a future podcast that we're going to do but um but yeah talk about a hype trailer like I haven't seen a trailer that hype from Marvel since I will say like one that got me super hyped like Thor Ragnarok was probably the perfect yes. get me hyped for Marvel stuff. And this trailer was the next one to do it for sure. Oh, so it sounds like when we have our uh, top five Marvel trailers episode, which is coming up soon, sounds like yeah, I might already know what one of your picks is, Mr. Ryan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I'm not even, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. It's on that list. It's on wow. it. It's, I've watched it. I've watched it like a lot. Like I've watched it. I, like when I, when it first came out, I watched it 10 times. You want to do there. But but now I've watched it a thousand times because you know <laughs> ten rings, a thousand ways to watch this, you know, show. I don't even think I've watched my own material ten times. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good. I'm sorry. And and what they're doing with the Mandarin, sign me up. Sign me up. Iron freaking bracelets. The, the, ah, it's so good. Ryan's just gonna yeah, explode. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What about you, Anna? What did you think of the Shang-Chi trailer? I'm excited. I think um oh, shoot, what is Simu, does Simu anyone Liu. remember it was on hmm? oh, sorry, I, I tried to beat your question, but I clearly you weren't asking that question. Anyways, what was your question? No, do you remember it was a series? It was on Netflix recently. Oh, I can't remember, but it was like Into the Badlands. Never mind. I, I can't. Sorry. Into the Badlands. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have to remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. But it, it, I'm not the Iron Fist. It's. I'm not talking about Iron Fist. I fucking hated that. But anyways, it. I'm excited. I'm excited for. I'm excited for. Shanghi just because it's something different. Mm-hmm. It's different. <laughs> just something different. So, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to think what trailer has gotten me really hyped. I, I would agree, Thor Ragnarok. It was just so colorful. It was so colorful. It was nothing like the... I mean, Thor really evolved to get to that point. So it was nice to finally uh, see something more uh, well-rounded than what we got the two previous movies. So to me, that trailer was leaps and bounds. I, like, it got me, I remember seeing it and just being incredibly excited. It just felt colorful. It felt fun. And I already was a huge fan of White White Tika. Taika Taika Ta- Ta- Taika Waititi White. I'm I'm so sorry. I feel so terrible. I'm, I'm terrible pronouncing his name. He's so funny. I've loved him since What We Do in the Shadows. Mm-hmm. So I was already like the minute anytime his name is attached to any project, it's like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. And of course, uh, I don't know. Well, Fantasia, you don't know this, but I'm a huge uh, Jeff Goldblum fan. So <laughs> I was already sold. I was sold the second I saw him. You, you waited uh, 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 an hour and uh, 20, 27, 27 minutes to tell me that you're a Goldblum fan. That's that's crazy. Oh my God. I love Jeff Goldblum. Like love Jeff Goldblum. On my, one of my birthdays, I had a Jeff Goldblum uh, or no, a Dr. Ian Malcolm birthday cake. Oh my God. That is so cool. <laughs> wow. I, I'm, that, that makes me happy. I, do you have a picture of that cake? Can I see a picture of it at some point? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, Absolutely. The, the Shang-Chi trailer, I'm not going to lie, was not my favorite Marvel trailer. <gasps> um, Get mostly, out of town. Mostly because it does not confirm Mephisto, and we all know he's coming in that movie. So really, they dropped the ball. Uh, no, yeah, I don't know what it was. The trailer, it I didn't dislike it i was like yeah cool this is this is fun this is fun but i didn't walk away from it being like yes this trailer like it's it's definitely not going to be in my top five trailers list uh but i am ex- i my biggest takeaways from that trailer were three things one this is already a given but simu lu 
looks awesome. He looks amazing. Mm -hmm. He's going to be an mm -hmm. awesome Shang-Chi. Like there was never a doubt in my mind, but now it's like, yep, there's further proof. Number two, there's three villains in this movie, which just gets me excited. And number three, I'm finally going to get to see one of the big villains of my childhood, the Mandarin on the big screen. And that makes me really excited. So the trailer the, just the, gave the real, me all the that. real Mandarin. The real Mandarin. Ooh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That is, that's perfect. Yes. That is perfect. I want to get like a, I've been eyeing, I've been eyeing sheets and shower curtains with Dr. Ian Malcolm on them. So I'm like, eh, I'm going to take the plunge and just do it. <laughs> Live your best life, girl. Live wow. your best life. I'm literally looking right now. I have the Funko Pop like eight feet away from me of him in that pose. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> Oh, it's great. But uh, I, all right, man. Well, that's it, guys. The watchers have watched uh, good old Captain America and Winter Soldier. But man, guys, what a ride. And first of all, Anna, for your first podcast, crush Did I do good? I hope I did. You did better than Ryan. You did better than Ryan. He's gone now. You're the, you're the new host. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Sh no, I, honestly, Ryan, I, I do have to commend you. You are such a great moderator. You're really good at keeping yeah. people on track. And Vitasia, you were great. Honestly, so much fun. I had it's such a wonderful time. Oh my God. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, I honestly really appreciate it. I, it I've, I've been very desperate to talk to people about this and not many people watch <laughs> what I like. So I just sit silently by myself and think it to I, myself. I like to picture, like, you know, in the movies when you see somebody and like, let's say it's like a close up on their face and they're like saying a big speech or, or, or something like that. And then like the camera kind of moves and you see they're talking to like their reflection in the mirror or it's like, you know, a joke like that. I kind of picture like you like going on this like three hour tangent about how much you hated Wonder Woman 1984 or whatever. And then we pan over and like, you're talking to this old lady on the street. She's like, I just asked you for the time. <laughs> Let me go home. <laughs> Well, Ryan will tell you, I got last, was it two years ago, I got strep. And I forget what what, what series came out that I like destroyed because I was sick. I was like, I didn't work. I didn't go to work for like a week because I got really bad strep. And I, te I was texting her. I'm like, Ryan, I haven't talked to a single human in seven days. Can I got my voice back? Can we talk about this, please? And I think I was on the phone with Ryan for two hours. I was like, I miss you. <laughs> I have no one to talk about this. Yeah, with. Yeah. You have a home here, Anna. You have a home here. <laughs> um, no, yeah, no, it's definitely, it's always great to find another fan and just, and just really gush about it. That's the real magic of it. Um, yeah, I can't remember what series it was, but yeah, you were, you were really, you were really on a roll on that one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Well, it, you know, like I talked to, well, when I talked to Adam about this stuff, I try to get him to watch it with me, mm -hmm. but I'll get really into it. He just looks at me like, what? <laughs> like gla just glazed over like, oh, the episode's over. And I'm like, do you have any <laughs> questions? Do you want to talk about it? Like, Let's dissect this. And he's like, not really. Okay. <laughs> I'll just go to bed now. <laughs> I'll just slip down now. But honestly, <laughs> honestly, bringing it back home, Anna, you crushed it. You crushed it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. This was a lot of no fun. No problem. We'll, we'll figure out another uh, special episode in the near future, and you're always welcome back on. Well, thank you. No worries. Uh, Ryan, when the good people want to find you, and you're not talking about Captain America and the Winter Soldier, and the U.S. agent and Annihilus, where can they find you? I'm going to actually change it up a little bit this time. Not only am I going to say you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada, but you can go on to YouTube and you're going to type in Expert Zone North America. And I just came out with a video called uh, ID Software, the Xbox Game Studio Spotlight. It is probably my best work I have done to date in terms of editing, narration, the whole nine yards. I'm very proud of it. If you could check it out, that would be great. What's the, the name again? So people have it again? Expert Zone. All one word. Expert, Expert Zone. Zone. Expert Zone. North America. North America. Okay. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to look at that too. Expert Zone, North America. Beautiful. Hands down, it is my best video to date. Next to this podcast, because this was really good. Like, <laughs> like, it, like, Anna, you brought a dynamic to this that was crazy, and I was, I was, 
I bet you say that for every guest. <laughs> he so, does. Yeah, you do. Yeah, this, yeah, this is our first guest. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, normally when I check our our um, our viewings, normally this podcast uh, we get about fifty in a week. So if I don't see fifty people watching Expert Zone North America by next week, I'm gonna come after all of you. So check out there Ryan's work. Uh, and you can find me on YouTube and Instagram and sometimes Twitter, but I'm not going to lie. I don't frequent the place. At Andrew Fantasia, plain and simple. And then you can find me here on Rebel Scum Podcast talking about the Star Wars. And uh, if you're one of our Patreons, I just came out with an episode about the Bad Batch to get you primed because the Bad Batch is coming out May 4th. So there you go. It's to whet yes. your appetites. Whet with a W-H. Oh. That's how I pronounce it. Whet. All righty. Well. Thank you so much. Anna, do you have anything you want to plug? Anything you're working on that you want people to look at or anything? Or you just want to be like, hey, keep watching Marvel, whatever. Any plugs you want to make? It, no, I, I'm going to plug this fo- podcast. Uh, listen to this podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, I am so glad that you guys were here to join me uh, to talk about Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It's going to be hard to talk about that now without mixing it up with the movie Captain America, colon, the Winter Soldier. I'm just going to have to start saying colon more in my daily <laughs> life. Actually, why would I complain about that? That sounds amazing. Anyway, thanks for listening to us, everybody. As always, have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.